What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, and welcome to our weekly Friday YouTube live streams where we bring on an amazing app all-star, as I like to say, to really break down the strategies that are working today. And today, I got a phenomenal guest. We did an app audit for her a few weeks back. She emailed me some of the success. that she's, I was like, Mila, you're going to have to come on and share these strategies. So she's been able to drive over 1 million downloads as an MVP. Now, MVP is just minimal viable product. And that's what we audited. And she's made some changes. And we're going to talk all about her strategies and how he, she's using TikTok to generate those 1 million downloads. So without further ado, let me introduce the guest. Her name is Mila Banerjee, and she is the founder and CEO of Pronti. We're going to pull up all that stuff in just a <laughs> Hi, Steve. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> it's pretty fun. I like it too. Me, let's, you know, congrats on all the success so far. I mean, one million downloads is no small feat so here's the app like i need this app right now i told you offline that i have my daughter who picks up most of my outfits when it's a brand this is not hers okay she wouldn't take credit for this but she does this so congrats on all the success for pronti so far thank you steve it's been uh it's been a wild ride yeah <laughs> so let's break it down on let's start with just how you were able to generate the 1 million downloads. I know you're using TikTok a lot. So what is this like viral TikTok framework that you have? Yeah, absolutely. And, and TikTok, I would say, is one of our main channels, but we have um, also done a number of other social channels. And I think uh, the framework is similar amongst the different channels. I think the very first thing that you have to do is get to know your user, really understand um, their pain points and the buttons that you need to to push to catch mm -hmm. their attention. Um, I, I think uh, I've, I've really come to love the phrase attention economy because it really helps you be brief and to the point and to capture people's attention. Um, so, and then the other two ways that we really did this is to experiment, 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 and then be consistent with putting out content. The, it's absolutely what all the algorithms out there are looking for is for you to be one of those amazing content drivers. So if you're going to catch the algorithm's attention, then you need to stay consistent. Now, I know I did some live streams with a past guest who used TikTok and he was talking about how he was really studying his audience and looking at the top videos for outfit maker or outfit of the day. For him, it was quit vaping. But what did you do to study what types of video and what types of content would work for your audience? Yeah, so I think especially in, in social media and in TikTok, content's changing so fast and trends are changing so fast. Um, so you really want to kind of keep doing this all the time is to check in mm. to see what's happening. Um, what's the mood of the day? Um, and really, we did this through understanding what were people loving. Um, and by knowing our user, we narrowed it down to that particular area. I wouldn't say that we focused just on like outfit of the day or anything that was particularly um, fashion oriented, because I really believe that our app is about normal people uh, wearing clothing and the normal pains and frustrations of going to the closet. So um, I didn't want to target just a fashion audience. And mm -hmm. so we were just keeping up with sort of, you know, the regular trends that were happening. Do you remember one video that really did well, like how you came up with the idea, how you executed and then the yeah, video? And, and I wish I really wish I could say that these videos that did really well were ones that we knew in advance would do really well and that we planned it and that it was this stroke of genius. No, <laughs> not at all. These things just sort of you put out content, you experiment, you just try things. You have an idea, do it, try it, leap over that edge. Um, and that's really what happened. And so one of our biggest videos was just um, one of my student creators. Um, they're marketing students. They're fantastic. They learn a little bit about startups with us. They help us with creation. Nice. 
Um, and she just literally went, <gasps> and that expression, that surprise <laughs> really? just captured millions of people. Wait, what did she, what was she surprised about? <laughs> Just um, so she was surprised about finding an app that that uh, took care of creating outfits for you. So mm. um, we've also done ones where you're experiencing like the frustration of not knowing what to wear and like just being overwhelmed. Mm. Um, and so you can already see that I'm I'm also embodying these like expressions um, because it, it's relatable. Right. We all can instantly feel it. I love that. I love that. You know, one of my, I was going to pull it up, one of my most popular videos, and it's because it's got indexed by Google. It's no longer the most popular, but it's like, how do you change your countries in your app store in Apple? And it was just like on a whim. I was in my office at the time and I was like wearing a hat, but it was like a warrior's jersey, like in my out, you know, like workout outfit. It was like backwards. And I was just like, this would be interesting. Let me just do it. And then became like, indexed by Google search, web search, and then it became my most popular videos. And they're like, this dude's a job. <laughs> like, I'm like, whoops, <laughs> you know, I wasn't prepared for video. <laughs> so I just did it, but it became one of my more popular videos. So it's kind of like, if you but have think, a win. But think if you hadn't done it, you wouldn't have that yeah. video anyways. So, you know, I think we just all have to right, get true. over ourselves. Just get yeah. out there. Yeah. I know. Don't you think we struggle so much, especially in the beginning where like, Oh, I don't know what people are going to think. And I'm like, I have like a hundred followers. <laughs> like who cares? <laughs> right. It's almost like we're, we have these like ambitious, like if I have a million, then maybe I should start caring about the type of content I create. But even then, like, you know, it's like, just create, you know, just create, go out there and create. Yeah. And I think, I think if you put that sort of pedestal there and you um, think that you need to be perfect, then that's a barrier you stuck in front of yourself as opposed to, yeah. hey, I'm human, I have flaws, I'm not perfect, and but I'm real. Yeah, I love it. The When you were creating these videos, were you using a call to action towards the end of the video or were you just kind of showing Pronti like, to that example of being surprised, oh my God, there's an app like this. Was it Pronti in the background? Did you have a call to action? You know what? I would say that we actually maybe didn't. And that could have worked as a strategy as well. So we're trying out the call to action right now. Um, but when we did it in the past, one of the things that happened was we would just get a ton of comments saying, what app is this? What app is this? What app mm. is this? That might have helped us. Mm. Uh, it's a great way to build that brand too. Cause I feel like these days with ASO being pretty difficult, like, you know, if you think about the dating world, calm hinge bumble, they all have more search volume than dating. Right. So right. I feel like, yes, in the beginning, it's important to go after their keywords, but at the same time, like build that brand and using TikTok is a great way to build that brand. Cause I had one client that's a little bit bigger already. She's like, Hey, how do I get more search volume for my term? And I was like, TikTok. I think that's the right answer. I don't know. I don't have enough data, but I was like, that's my guess because then people search because unlike other social media platforms, people have to really search for Pronti in the app store and then download your app, thereby, you know, increasing the search volume of your brand. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is that I, f I feel I'm not a TikTok expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I feel that TikTok is also, um, indexing terms and description and hashtags and words yeah. in the in the video more so i think that that it's going to become a powerful place to search as well yeah i mean you talked about that you want to expand on a little bit like the tiktok seo steven who was talking about puff count and talk about tiktok and viral videos he said the same thing like his he's seeing a lot of great SEO content says so content he has a long time ago are showing up and still getting a lot of views. Yep. And the exact same thing is happening with us. We have one yes. video from the end of November that is just continuing to get views and to tick up. And this is really indicative of how TikTok is going a little bit more 
longer lasting. Whereas in the past, mm. it used to be that, you know, you'd throw up a video and, um, you know, it'd be gone in a heartbeat. Um, I really, I think that things are changing. And I think this is an important part of being a business person today is that you have to just be very flexible and very willing to, to constantly change and evolve. I love it. Okay. And you also have this tip about don't make this TikTok mistake. Is there some mistake you're like, oh, don't do this? Yeah, that was. So we we went into this phase. So, you know, it's not all glamorous having an MVP go to 1 million downloads. It's some sweaty armpit <laughs> time. Like our app couldn't <laughs> handle it. It wasn't built for that. Um, and so what we did was we we really went heads down and rebuilding the the app. And then during that time, I might have reduced our TikTok content. That was not smart. So, um, yeah, consistency, stick with it. Even stick when you're it, heads no down what. trying to rebuild something. Do you ever run into it like, oh man, this, this content is not getting as many views as I thought it would be. Let's shift our focus. Do you ever run into these like things where I'll create content? I'm like, man, this one gets like no views. Like, how do you keep going? Cause I think, you know, yeah. this meal, this is my sort of thought process. People get stuck in the start of things and I'm like, it ain't the start. That's hard. It's the continuing that's hard. Absolutely. And I think, I think we sort of have a mindset and I don't know what the percentage is. Cause it's not, it's not a hard <laughs> science. It's a, it's a little bit of an art. There's some percentage that you just keep repeating. There's some percentage that you just are total experimenting. And then there's some that are, you're mm. like tweaking on the margin. And so mm. I think, you know what, if something's not working, get up, look at it, go, can I tweak it? And then that's another piece of content. And then, um, you know, think, have, inspiring moments, big, long coffees, where you're thinking about what else do you know about your users, have conversation with your users, let that inspire new content. Um, so just try and like, not always have to be brand new, not always have to create everything from scratch, try and do some pieces of different things to keep you going and just have you like put things out there. Um, we also utilize, I, I mentioned my fantastic students, um, yeah. and when each one of them does the same content, they do it differently. And so that in itself is, mm. is, um, you know, a personal take on something and, and can generate something a bit more. Where are you finding these superstar students? Who are these students? Oh, I just, I just love them. They're marketing students. So I've got, I've had some from Laurier, Wilfrid Laurier University. I've had some from Queens University. These are both universities in Canada. If there's anybody in the audience that's a student from down in the US, I am so open to having um, some American TikTok students as well. So um, the, the big trade for us is that these students get to learn a little bit about, you know, sort of overall marketing strategy, that type of thing, and what it's like to be in a startup, mm. What are the things that I think about? And then on the flip side, um, they get to experiment and create content and bring their ideas to the table in a way that, you know, many organizations just wouldn't let them go wild and free. Who's FK? Uh, yeah, sorry. Somebody came into the studio. That was a private oh. chat. <laughs> Is oh, that anybody sorry, on your team? That. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to kick them. All right. I want to say hi to a few people. Matthew, congratulations. First should do something for you. So reach out to me if you need any help, but you're first. So I'll, I'll give you Raphael while we wait for the video to begin. Why don't those independent developers that just start out post links to our apps and have everyone install Raphael. It's a good idea. Unfortunately, YouTube won't have you paste, you know, links in here to protect me. So great idea. Kelvin, how's it going? I think there are some communities like on Reddit and I know there was a Facebook group that were like review exchanges. So find those if you're in the different looking for those initial reviews apps for parents what's happening john how's it going good to see you man ricardo good to see you and then romaine we got miguel what's happening fam marwan sebastian a lot of people here see they're here because of you adrian says happy friday y'all this is so inspiring and then kevin oh you happy birthday my friend and then mary good friend of mine I personally am interested in the app and looking forward to learning from your journey as well that's All awesome right. you know one of the things I want to move on to is the you were able to test different app features before even building it on TikTok. How are you able to do that? Yeah. So I think 
You know, one of the biggest things that's helped me out in this journey, because we've got this really great big vision and you just can't do it all at once. Um, yep. So you've got to think about what's the lo-fi way to test stuff before you develop it, um, because developing is expensive. And so we always try and come up with ways that we can test it. So right now, for example, we're testing a feature where... Um, people can vote on your outfit. So if you can imagine um, a young woman or a man who's like, oh God, should I wear this outfit or should I wear that outfit? And uh, we think this could be a really great feature of the app and a growth loop. So we decided to test it on TikTok. And it's really fun to see the conversations that strike up and the votes that people have and, and how much actually people are willing to, to help you decide on what to wear. I got some questions for you too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Block watch app says I use students too. Yay. And students. Then... <laughs> you pay these students. Is it like an un unpaid internship? Yeah. hundred percent. I pay them. So, uh, it's actually not allowed in Canada not to pay them. So, uh, but that's not the reason I don't pay them. They're, they're valuable. Um, and, but they do get learning. There's like lots of, of, um, back yeah. and forth. It's gotta be a two way street. So, and then I don't, you know, you tell me, but like you strategically position the company in a location where you would have access to these students too. Yes, I did. In fact, that's how we built um, our MVP was using developer students from the University of Waterloo. Um, we uh, are also affiliated with the University of Waterloo Incubator, the Velocity Incubator. Um, and uh, it's been, it's been a great place for lots of talent. Waterloo is kind of our Stanford. Yeah, I love it. Okay. And then Dustin asks, how many of those downloads did you did did you turn into monthly active users? Yeah, you know what, Dustin, this is a great question because certainly we lost a lot of people through it. Um, we currently have between 30 and 50,000 monthly active users. That's amazing. Congrats. Yeah. That's really I'm cool. I'm on a remarketing to tell everybody it's it's stable now. Don't don't run away. You know what? That that is so brilliant. We we are running a fa Facebook campaign for a client, and we are finding that you know lookalikes obviously are doing much better. And so, what do you need to run a lookalike campaigns? Users, and it's like you have now. Even if they're, it's way easier to bring them back versus like trying to find new ones. Love that. Ah, I'm gonna have to pick what your brain on that. Okay. Deal. I'm not an expert on this, by the way. I got to figure out how to do it. <laughs> but yes, if you have the email addresses, a lot easier versus like. This client does not have email addresses, so we have to do we have to do some other tricks to get around that. Oh, but what is the monetization strategy for this app? I see there are no subscriptions available. Yeah, so thanks for the question. So we are obviously um, still in a very early state where we're iterating on the monetization strategy. But for the most part, it's coming from the retailers. So we have a section of the app called, uh, that's shopping, and the retailers then pay to be recommended. And this uh, in itself is a, a really great way for us to um, build our brand, to bring in some new and exciting things and have it be reimbursed by somebody other than the user. Yeah, I love it. I don't know if we answered this question, but Cardo asks, how did you find reach out and find these students and then we already answered the financial compensation, but was it just like through the Waterloo, you know, partnership? The university? Yeah, so um, it's really neat because uh, there are definitely co-op and um, hiring offices at every university. I, I can't imagine that any university doesn't have this nowadays. But um, also what ended up happening is that you get a little bit of a reputation. I started to go on these... Um, you know, sort of speaker panels within the university and, and share sort of what we're doing. And that attracted more people and word of mouth. And yeah, then you just get the very best. And I'm sure that uh, Mia, Lauren, Sahar, and Alex are all feeling pretty good right now about being the very best. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what, okay, you got to tell me, I got to, I'm, I'm always digging deeper. How did you get on these panels? Is it reaching out to the professor? What did you do to get on these panels too? You, it just sort of happened, I think. Um, so one one student, Elise, was on um, a, a entrepreneurship and um, a, like a club, and they mm. had a panel that was going. And so she asked me whether or not I'd be willing to 
to speak at that panel, which for me was a huge thing of honor, you know, that you know, yeah. to be the boss that's invited to the, the panel. I, I just, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and, and then it just kind of grew thing, you know, word of mouth. Oh, she's, she's a bit crazy and fun, keeps people's attention. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is, might not be a good thing. <laughs> it's funny. I'm coaching my son's badminton team right now. And then they're all in high school. And just like, I remember being in high school and now you don't want to stand out and I don't want to act crazy. And then you get older and you're like, I'm pretty comfortable in my skin and being a little bit different too. And then people like you for being different. And it's just like right. this crazy loop of being like, oh, I was wrong back then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is almost full circle um, back to the, you know, get over yourself. It's just, yeah, yes. we're quirky. I'm, I'm quirky. I'm nerdy. I'm goofy. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Blockwatch app says I pay my developer students, but the others are all free. So great little hack there. And then he, I'm going to assume he, but they, they love getting value from a startup for free. And he also asked any insight on using AI for software development. Sure. I know you're yeah, an AI. You know, it's Ponty AI, by the way. So there's AI. Yeah. Yeah. We we have lots of algorithms running, actually. Six to be um, precise ish. Um, it depends on how you count the algorithms. So um, I I think so some some of the biggest tips that I would say, um, so I've done some coaching at the Velocity Incubator as well. And I, I find that a lot of people think that AI is this like magic solution, um, but we're not there yet. We don't actually have artificial intelligence. We have some very powerful machine learning. And if you start to understand a little bit about what it predicts, because that's what that's what machine learning really does. It predicts things. And so if you can understand what it's getting good at predicting, then you can uh, work with the algorithm to give you an answer in a mass scalable way that a human couldn't calculate. Um, so start small. Don't use ginormous machine learning algorithms. They will only cost you a lot of money in cloud costs. Even arguably we did this for, for speed and oh my gosh, our cloud bills were so expensive. Um, so, you, you know, you can do it in the MVP, but when you go to scale, you're going to have to think light. So I would even just encourage you to think light, especially if you're not um, used to the machine learning algorithms, um, try and stay as simple as possible. You know, frankly, uh, a linear regression is a machine learning algorithm. So that's a super easy calc. Okay, way above. Did that answer it? <laughs> I'm sure it did, Oops, but I would have never I known. <laughs> I love it. Okay, don't don't be afraid of doing that. <laughs> Look, I love the having the audience there, you know, and you guys are doing my job for me. So Dustin says, <laughs> "What are your thoughts on live social e-commerce selling like Amazon Lives? Can you see yourselves implementing something in that space? I know it's very popular in Asia right now. A lot of like South Korea." A lot of these things, e-commerce lives and selling on live, kind of like, you know, user generated, what's that sh home shopping network type of things. Yeah. Um, so I will be totally honest that I am not familiar with Amazon lives, but I am familiar with the concept of, of social commerce. And um, I actually have a um, founder friend who's got a company called eStreamly. Nicholas, this is a shout out to you and Smitha. Um, they, uh, they are doing a lot of work in that space. I think that there's a lot of things that we can incorporate as Pronti grows. Um, this is this is the challenge of a big vision and a and something where you're like, I can see so many uses for this. You really have to hold yourself back and and focus on your core value proposition, figure it out, uh, and then build from there. So right now, uh, social commerce is not on our roadmap. If that helps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Block Watch app says Flutter has cut my hosting costs significantly. And that's just for those who are listening to the podcast. Yeah. And, and does do. he, does he know yeah. that we're a Flutter app? No, maybe not. I, I don't know if he knows, but yeah, that's awesome too. That's good knowledge. I, I have no idea about any of this stuff. So yeah. I'm always interested. So this in is, that. this was a bit of a learning too. We thought we could go out into the market with just an, just an iOS app. And yeah. uh, that was, um, 
uh, not good enough for our retailers. So in our space, we couldn't just test the MVP with um, iOS. Then I brought in another native, the Android native app. We could never keep them in sync. It was such a pain. We're too small of a team. So we switched to Flutter and it's been awesome so far. Nice. I love it. I wanted to point this out because I love this flow, right? And I think this is, oh man, I'm blanking on the name. Sorry, Jake. Oh, got it. Jake, we talked about TikTok advertising with him, but he was saying that, you know, instead of building social logins, he was just asking for an email using this type of prompt. And I, I think this is the right way to go. I don't have data to support this, but I think asking for piecemealing what you're asking from your users to one question at a time is the best way to try to get them to engage. You know, I'd rather give you my name and then my email address and then my password for some reason versus you asking all three at once. I'm like, ah, that's so much work. But when you ask it on different screens, I always feel like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so yeah. I like it. All right. Is there anything in the app? I want to show off the app too and some of the changes you made. So Yes. I know one well, of in the fact, new features that... from your yeah. teardown, we fixed we fixed the password. It's going to go out there uh, next week. So, thank cool. you for for tearing us down and giving us some thoughts and and feedback. Um, we do have a lot of things. I've been doing since we launched our new app. We've been running a number of UX interviews, and I've got some really great stuff from those UX interviews that we need to fix. Um, nice. But I'm super excited about the closet, that little plus sign if you touch it sure. oh, or or go into the item. I have like five to 10 black shirts. <laughs> so <laughs> it is one That's of fine. my <laughs> staples. <laughs> yeah. I've uh, never seen you in a black shirt. There you go. <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's my preferred summer outfit. <laughs> So yeah, okay. um, as you can see on the upload your clothes, we have mm. um, really three main methods um, that are available today, but coming soon, highlighted uh, in gray, right here. are three of our magic closet methods. And I'm so excited about this because it's going to make everyone's lives so much easier in terms of getting their clothing items into the closet. So the next feature to launch, uh, hopefully soon, we're just waiting on Google to approve our app, is email to closet. And nice. so we'll look for your past purchases in your email. We will not maintain a connection. We're only reading it to figure out if it's a purchase. And then we grab the image and then that's it. We close off. We don't store anything uh, other than the image that you select to put into your closet. That's awesome. So just in case you missed that, you connect your Gmail, Pronti will look through your emails real quick just to see all the purchases and then bring it onto it. I'm like, go, let's go, right? Like I yeah. usually have an email that's important and an email for my personal, just a bunch of things I buy. So you can have access to it. I don't really care. <laughs> like there's nothing awesome. personal in there. Yeah. I love that So then feature. you can get that's all really your cool. amazing black shirts and your hoodies and your caps. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I love it. You know, I was telling Mila, I was like, that's the problem with these apps. Like, I want these apps, but I don't, I'm too lazy to upload everything that I have. Like, it's just too much work. And so she's like, look, Steve, we're coming out with this Gmail feature. It's going to be really awesome. I'm like, oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then later there's selfie and social too. Ooh, what is that? Selfie, obviously, I can take a selfie, right? Yeah. And then with social, like just going through connecting my Instagram and you pull all my outfits from there. Exactly. It's another machine That's learning awesome. algorithm. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Hey, these user interviews, what are you, how are you getting these users? And then what are any like key learnings in terms of the right way to ask questions to make sure you get valuable feedback versus like, oh, it's a good idea. And you spending a bunch of months building that feature and nobody uses it. How are you differentiate between the two? Yeah. So how do we get the users? So very early on, almost uh, one of the first releases, what we did was we um, put in a help improve Pronti. And then we've asked for a checkbox, would you like to continue to help us? And so we'll go to that list of people and see if they're willing to, to have a chat. I also just generally recruit. So through my network, if but they have to fit my user profile. So it mm. is a huge mistake to do a user interview with somebody who does not fit your user profile. You are not going to get the information you want. Um, so have you ever read the book, The Mom Test? Yeah, I just finished it. I mean, it was a couple of months ago, but I do love that. 
I wanted to bring on the author, actually. It's a really good book. Ah, oh, oh, that'd be amazing. Um, so the mom test really helps you with questions on, uh, in order to get not the answer yes from users, yeah. but in order to get the answers um, that you actually really need. And so what I do is I preface every user interview with, there's no, there's no right answer here. In fact, if they give me their uncertainty and their confusion, that's actually a gift. And that, and so I sort of started off with that. So, because many times, especially, especially with young women, uh, they, they want to be, they want to be right. They want to, they want to be smart. They want to help out and, uh, and they don't have to get it right. In fact, if they don't get it right on the user interview, then I know I've done something wrong. Um, so I start everything off with that. So if I ask you a question and you don't know the answer, that's good. <laughs> that helps me. Yeah. Um, and so it reduces the stress and I just get them to talk as they use the app. And while they're talking out loud, I hear so many things. And then I just sort of ask them questions like, well, what does that, before you touch that button, what does it mean to you? Like, what do you think is behind mm. that button? Um, and then I, I just get a lot of, a lot of really great feedback. I see where it's sticky, where they're confused because they're talking out loud and they're like, well, but maybe I do this, or I don't know, I feel, and then they start to tell me just different things about their lives, which at the end of the day, if I know a little bit about a user's life, I can then make our product help their life. So yeah, it's, it's all so, so valuable. People have often asked me, yeah. why do I spend so much time talking to users when I could use a data platform and just get it? And the thing is, you need both of them in conjunction with each other, because you, you, you need to understand the experience. And I almost feel like you want that excitement too, right? Like obviously, hopefully they're not trying to just please you, but you want that excitement like, oh, oh, you know, like that. Like you want that. You don't get that from like a user. So I'm going to give you feedback. Like is this, yeah. I mean, is this, are you automatically putting some of these uh, like the ticks into my closet? So is this happening? is actually something that we've now discovered is a very like confusing thing. So um, we're going to, we're going to revamp this. Yeah. These are sample items that are intended to help you understand how the app works so that when mm -hmm. you go, let's say to the home screen, which I also think is another sticky spot. Um, the home is, the is home? actually the big round button. Okay. You're in shopping. Yep. Yeah, there's the home. So on the home screen, this is where you get your outfits. And if you click, so all of these pop-ups too, horrible, 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 too many, <laughs> oops. Uh, they're not behaving the way we ask them to behave. Um, so we got to debug that. But let's say you hit virtual office. Um, if like you it. didn't have those stock items in here, it would just throw an error. And so we've been thinking about how to not dead end users because it's, it's not fun to hit a dead end. Um, I was even doing it recently. I was editing an outfit I was about to wear and I hit a dead end and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's a constant evolution, but there you go. You're swiping through, you're getting different outfits. I noticed that the recommender is not wanting to give you shoes today. So this is an AI gremlin. We'll fix that. This is using my, oh, maybe outfit. cause you're I'm in black. virtual office. You're in virtual yeah. office. You don't need I mean, shoes. Yeah, you don't need shoes. I literally have pajamas on the bottom. So, yes. Nice. Uh, Comfortable. I just didn't have time, honestly. <laughs> Beautiful. There we go. Shoes. Nice. Look at you. Snazzy. That's total. That last outfit, that was absolutely a Steve outfit. Yes, this is my general outfit. My do white shoes. But yes, this is, you'll usually find me in, in this type of outfit <laughs> <laughs> my wife will love you because i'm always like hey honey does this match like this <laughs> okay and she's like okay yes you're fine <laughs> it's the shoes that get me mila i know the shoes are important it's the shoes that get me like uh, it's just white shoes, are you, shoes are, you are you a sneaker head no but like i just want to match and look cool and you know my wife tells me if you're gonna wear a basic outfit up top the shoes better pop it's the shoes that make the outfit. So mm, she's sophisticated. I, I like it. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Jay Bottoms love it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, Rivera? Rivera has a question. Was it iOS or Android that got most of your downloads? So we were just slightly ahead on iOS than Android. 
Interestingly, because iOS was more stable, we had way better mouths and retention on iOS. Duh. If when it crashes, people leave. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So um, I think now since we've launched, we're getting um, a, a much more similar experience between Android and iOS. All right. I have a funny story about going viral in Latin America, actually. Okay, let's do it. So we accidentally geotagged to the to Latin America um, on TikTok, and we got six million views on one of our TikToks down uh, down there, and uh, it was awesome. I was so excited; it was just thrilling. But uh, then came the slew of emails that said, "Why is your app not in Spanish?" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, we're still too small." So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, know, know what you're targeting. <laughs> how did you geo-target Latin America? Is it just, so, um, yeah, wh how do you do that? Yeah, well, one of our team members uh, was down there for Christmas. And okay. Oh, posted, okay. And it it linked it. So uh, I got it. So it was just a post. Oh, man, I have to log in again. It was just a post, and then it was somewhat tagged in Latin America. And you're able to do it. That's how it all yeah. worked. Exactly, nice. exactly. I love this so. stuff. All right. Let's get into the app audit segment. And Mila and I talked about this. Mila, I think we're okay with this. We just have to wear an outfit that Pronti recommends. So me, if Mila loses, she'll wear an outfit that Pronti recommends to me. And then if I lose, I'll have to wear. I probably am <laughs> suffering more. <laughs> and outfit that Mila Pronti recommends to Mila. All right. And so let's get into it. We like to start I'm off every... Really Okay, good. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off every app on it with some dad jokes. I'm so excited. <laughs> me too. You fumped me up with this. Right, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Uh, you go first. Okay. I shall go first. Let me find one. Mm -mm. Okay, here we go. You might have to this but all right you would mila my wife rearranged the labels on my spice rack haven't confronted her yet but the time is cumin <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> right. that that's so that's so great um can i ask the audience if they want a fish joke a parrot joke or an arnold schwarzenegger joke okay let's see and while we do that, whoever's so the fastest. Leave a comment. Yeah. How long did it take oh. from app? How long did it take from app idea to version one launch? We'll wait for the audience. Uh, They're on a little bit hmm. of a delay. Hmm. Uh, it, hmm. Depends on when you put the app idea. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a year and a half because I spent a lot of time in market research and really just understanding. Um, users. In fact, I generated some IP around virtual try on, and I realized that we were too early for virtual try on. This was my experience. Um, I uh, have some founder friends who are going hard on virtual try and I'm cheering them on. But for me, I decided to take a different path. I like it. All right. The winning Arnold, you got four votes. Arnold Samuel was the first one. And then Mary, uh Jumped in. Awesome. One vote for fish. One vote for parrot. But, <laughs> oh, no. It's not fair, okay? You guys got to be okay. Anyways, go ahead, Mila. I'm I think, I think it's an Arnold joke. All right. So you know, it was funny because yesterday, um, I I happened to see Arnold Schwarzenegger eating an Easter egg, and I I was like, oh, okay, well, East, you know, Easter's already started. But I went up to him. I decided to talk to him, and I said, oh, I know what your favorite holiday is, and you know what he said. Has to be Easter, baby. Has to love Easter, baby. <laughs> That's like so bad. That <laughs> <laughs> Just dumb. All right, put M if you thought Mila's joke was better. Put S if you thought my joke was better. Again, the loser has to wear an outfit from the other from the winner that Pronti recommends, and I'm gonna put everything in there to give Mila more variety. Okay, awesome. so if you want us to take a look at your app. All you can do, simple, at masters.com slash audit, at masters.com slash audit. And we have looked at your app. Do me a favor. Just rep hit reply. Let me know how it went. Sometimes I am. I want to know if I'm right or wrong. 
sometimes I'm not always confident in that. Okay, we've got- It's super valuable, everyone. Do the app audit. Oh, thanks, Mila. That's how we got connected. So that's crazy. Yeah. All right, we have, unfortunately, I don't have this app in the US. So I can't give you a complete app audit, Cervanti, you know, and I was too lazy to change my country within App Store Connect. So within uh, the my Android, by the way. But like what I would say here is, let me see if this is the right way you're doing it from an ASO perspective. So I won't get into the app itself and I'll do my best. But you want from an ASO perspective, you want good keywords. So it looks like it's coupons, promos, Thing within, I'm just gonna assume offers. You have Amazon offers. That's crazy. All right, might just be available in India. So, just have those keywords in the title. Right now, you just have grab on. Look, you're obviously doing really well with 500,000 downloads, but have those good keywords because they do help. You know, we have seen now. Could just be Google not launching this we have seen video do pretty well on google play and then within the video it's, it has to be a youtube video optimize that video within youtube add the tags of your competitors in there because what you'll find is that in the similar apps so let's just put coupons right now right here similar apps if you're in the i think it's a top two or three i can pull it up on android but if you're in the top two or three you can drive downloads and it's the google play explorer that you're trying to hack when you put in video so like here you can see coupons has video i can look at their trailer and then when i go to their trailer pull up here So here, the coupons app with cashback offers. I love it, right? Because they they can they're going after cashback offers. I'm assuming, or it's just a a pleasant mistake. The thing that they're not doing is having tags. So they only have coupons app. So within these within YouTube, there's these tags like iOS keywords, right? That you can put in, and so you might want to put Groupon, Retail Me Not, Family Dollar. So similar types of apps to you because business this is just my assumption you're gonna want more than one app like dating you know there's people tend to have a folder that's what i hear by the way of dating apps and so with coupons i'm gonna assume the same thing maybe they're just not relying on one they want to check out different ones i have uber and lyft on my phone and so like you know you don't need to be you know it's not one one person wins all like a pdf scanner as an example they're gonna have multiple and so you want to sort of optimize your app to show up in this similar apps portion. Mila, anything you want to add to this? I actually took a note. I think that's uh, that's great. I think that we also optimize the title. We were Pronti Outfit Maker in order mm -hmm. for people to also Google. Even though the word Pronti is, is not common as a search, it right. still helped us to have something more written down for people to be able to find. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Mila has the right keywords with outfit maker and then, you know, clothing planner and shopper. They're going to have that e-commerce built. So this is a really great use of the title and subtitle and then grab on Cervanti. You you need to add those things in here. And I do think that adding a video we've seen typically helps on Google Play. On iOS, it's a mixed bag. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts. On Google, because it's not the first screenshot and Google does a better job of within the search results, it can only help you instead of hurting you. Okay, cool. Shall we look at the results? That's the more fun thing I want to do. Miguel, thank you, Miguel. Appreciate you. Apps for parents went to Mila. Osama went to Steve. And then Samuel said, lulz, but I'm going to do S. So Mila, round one goes you to me. Won. You won. I was a little bit worried. Where's my door? Okay, boxing uh door. It was my delivery. <laughs> I, I was expecting more of a stronger Arnold, but <laughs> that's all I was like. Uh, <laughs> okay. Do you, do you want to go first or you want me to go first? I got to find my next joke. Okay, here we go. I got it. You want to go first or you want me to go first now? Okay, I'll go first this okay. time. Okay. I'll do, I'll do the fish joke because I think that was the second, that was the runner up. So two fish in the tank. First one says to the other, 
How do you drive this thing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking up other things at the same time, but I like it. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm going to do a show. Okay, this is one that's an oldie, but maybe a goodie. Okay. Uh, what do you call a fish with no eyes? <laughs> I have heard that one. That one's a good one. All right. All right. Dueling all right. fish yeah, jokes. Maybe there's a cricket. <laughs> All right. So put M more votes this time. Come on. You guys asked for a fish show. <laughs> Ozama. So M for Mila. S for Steve. All right. Anything that I missed from what we want to talk about? Uh, do, 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 do. You know, one thing I did want to mention too, Mila, you kind of talked about like not being reliant on TikTok and exploring mm -hmm. other channels. You want to get into that a little bit more? Yeah. So I think uh, not reliant or using TikTok as a super boost or using any social channel as a super boost is uh, the ideal state. So we've been really thinking about how do we leverage our community? How do we leverage referrals? How do we leverage growth loops? Um, and so this is something that I'm deeply thinking about. I mentioned the this or that, the, that um, concept that that voting is intended to be a growth loop in which people will bring in their, their friends and uh, we can then maintain a steady organic train that doesn't come from social. Yeah. I love it. You know, I think every app should have this. It is a feature to just be able to share the app. I know Calm does this really well. I have a little presentation on it. I'm not an expert on this, but I was just sort of analyzing what people were doing right and what people were doing wrong and kind of coming up with sort of my hypotheses on this. Now with virality, you know, Mila, I think people take, people try too hard to be like, what's the growth loop? What's the, I'm like, yo, have a good product that people want to use first and then think about that stuff. Cause don't, I mean, think about it, but don't make it a huge priority from day one because you, and you're going to forget. You're not, you're not going to have a product that people love. So I'm just going to show a couple of different examples because I'm thinking about this too, by the way. So number one, I was like, have users, <laughs> right? And then number two, how do you make your users look good? And I kind of give some examples with call. Look, after they're done with something, they have a little thing. And I was like, are people sharing this? And I looked on Instagram using the hashtag daily calm. And I do see a lot of different shares on this. Here's even more shares that people are doing. Obviously, Crossy Road, you saw a lot of this on Twitter, people sharing their fails and how high of a score they did. I use a fasting app called Fastic. You can share your fast breaker and it has the amount of hours you fasted to. Again, it makes me look good because I did this person close to 19 hours, right? Or hour 110 hours last week. So those are things that, and I was, they sent an email to Mila where it was this week in review and I was like, oh, that's cool, right? They don't do this anymore. But I was like, this is really cool. And it has this big button that says tweet it, which is very easy to do, by the way. And I was like kind of looking that up. And I was like, who is tweeting this? So this was uh, the prompt. Last week I fasted for da 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 So I just searched for fasting with zero just to see how many people are tweeting it. You can see tons of people were tweeting this. So that's how I think about it when I'm thinking about like virality and getting people to come into the app. As well. Yeah, I love it. I think for us, we've been thinking about how one of the, the pain points that we relieve is um, the guilt that you feel from a closet full of clothes that you don't wear. And yeah. so even a statistic around that, like, you know, how many things go unworn in my closet or statistics around um, the usage, I think that would be a fun one to, to tweet out there to show your sustainability and to show um, what you're accomplishing. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I love that. I love that feature. Okay. And then block watch, just sign up for the audit. Got to run. Thanks Mila and Steve for all the you know, helpful insights. Bye. bye. <laughs> we're not done yet. Okay. We're just saying bye to one person. <laughs> okay. Let's get into the next app audit. And then Mila, you won the last round. So we, we will have round three. We'll, we'll hear your <laughs> parrot joke. <laughs> it makes it exciting. Okay, this is for, I'm going to say it right, equestrians, the horse riders, is that how you say it, equestrians? Equestrians, yeah. Okay, you said it a lot better than I could. All right, so that's the app. Unfortunately, they're not sharing it. Willie was saying, hey, he submitted this a while ago, but we're hoping to launch an app in one month. It's not really ready yet. I'd like to see what adjustments we can make to make a better user experience. Might be interested in the premium app audit and consultation call, depending on the suggestions we receive. 
Willie, I'm holding nothing back. So you might not even need the premium call. But here we go. All right, the, let's get to the app itself. And I want to pull up his screenshots. But Willie, first suggestion. Yo, update your website, bro. Like, <laughs> at least get it to link to the, the right links. But okay. Uh, how do you spell this app again? But I think he's not... I think he's not on the site yet because it's not available. So maybe coming soon would be better on your buttons because well, I think it says get is, it on. The app is available because I, you know, I prepped for this and I was able to oh, download did you? the app. Okay. I, was a, I, it wasn't. I was a little bit worried too. I was like, mm, is this app out? So let's see when they launch three months ago. Okay, good. So they are officially launched. So just link it to the website, document, experiences, rides, track. Yeah, so it is for horse people. <laughs> that word that I have trouble saying. Okay, first and foremost, look, kind of like what we said before, you want to have your good keywords in the title. Right now, you're not even utilizing a subtitle. This is just your developer name. So go into App Follow, do some keyword research in terms of what people are searching for. And I'm going to try to spell. How do you say it? ESQ, uh, ES, EQS, the horse Equestrian. thingy. Equestrian. Equestrian. How do you, how do you spell that? EK? EQ? EQ. I mean, EQ. EQU. EQU. E ES. Right, there you go. Love Google. I remember when I was in high school, I would try to come up with a big word. I'm like, oh, I'm going to use that big word. And I'm writing this, you know, in person, you know, we're handwriting it this paragraph so i was like i'm gonna spell this thing let me just use a simple word <laughs> let me figure out what the simple word is and that that's me in a nutshell okay so i have a double letter spelling issue <laughs> this is the way i like to do keyword research i just got off a call with our team and i was like look here's one thing i do i find the biggest app or the number one app right so like this one well one that's closest to you it looks like this equal lab might be the closest to you willing so I'll click this little I button and do keyword research. The cool thing about app follow is I don't have to think like horse racing, horses, horse life. You think about these and equestrian might not have a search as much search volume as some of these other brands. Other people can't yeah. spell it either. Yeah. Are you seeing some misspellings here? Well, that's why they're not searching it. Yeah, could be, you know, like that's only 21 right now. So it's a pretty low score, but people are searching for horse life, maybe horses, horse riding. Maybe those are more interesting. So that's what you do. Like horse riding has more versus equestrian, right? And the other thing I like to do is find the app that I feel like does not belong. So it looks like from this judgment, when I see apps with low reviews that rank really well for this term, my hunch is without doing data analysis, is this is a pretty low competitive keyword where do you know what the competition or the traffic score was 21 that's pretty low you want to be around 30 so but if there was a big one like if let's just say this was a highly competitive term i would click on this one because it only has eight reviews granted look this has seven and eleven that's why i'm saying that this is probably a low competition keyword so you definitely want to start using it but i'll click on the one that doesn't belong and let's say for meditation might be a better example And then I'm going to see their little eye icon because I'm going to like, they're probably doing something right that I don't know about. Right. And I'm like, oh, let's just, let's just see what they have. This one, number 12 for meditation with only 470. Everybody else has like hundreds of thousands of review ratings. So I'm going to click on this one just to see if I can find different keywords that I couldn't have thought about. Cause the big guys are going to focus on the big high traffic, high competition keywords. That's what, that's why they're big. But the smaller guys, we have to be a little bit more nimble and creative. And so this is where I tend to find the keywords. I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about this one. That's amazing. Oh, it has 35 and low traffic. Stuff decently medium, medium competition. I'm like, oh, cool. That's how I'll find these more creative keywords that I haven't thought about is picking on the app that didn't because they did all the work for me. And that follow did all the work for me. Very right. cool. Okay. Shall we get into the app and then you can, I'll let you lead. You, know, you ride horses? Let me, uh, I, I, um, I like horses. I had a horse experience that scared me as well. So 
All right, this yeah. is the first page, Mila. Any thoughts They're on so this? They're so smart. Um, I don't have a value prop here. I mean, it's a trusted horse experience, but um, I, I'm not yet uh, excited to sign in. Um, so I think maybe there, there needs to be, there needs to be something that, uh, shows me what I'm going to get, gets me a little excited so that I click in an email and password. Willie, let's look at your app store, like remind users what the app does again, mm -hmm. right? Like the first thing shouldn't be this now. It should be there, document experiences, rides, and progress. Track and share experience with for every horse. Remind users what the app is, your unique selling points, what people really love about the app, why you developed it anyways. Remind them, then ask for it. Now, most this is a first-time user experience. Why am I logging in? I'm a first-time user. This is a passion. I hate this. Help me create account. And you know what? Like most of the time, I don't want to create an account. So this becomes a barrier for me to even actually get into your app. So allow me to X out and see it. I think this is valuable. But when you force people, unless you have a really high create account rate, and that is like above 80, or let's just say above 75, you're losing people here. And so, you know, Andy from Fitcher, he, he used to work for SoundCloud and he was kind of... He, he said, I think it was 56% or 65, one of those numbers. SoundCloud was getting account creations. Let's give them the 65, benefit of the doubt. That's still 35% of your users that you're losing. And if you're paying for that, you're just throwing out 35. Just multiply, you know, whatever that percentage is to your cost per install or cost per user. And that's what you're ending up with. So I wouldn't do this if, and if you're going to you get a certain app reviewer, they will question it as well. So we got questioned as to why we had um, a sign in screen right away. And we talked about how the personalization really starts right from the day one. Um, but we also have to sell that to users. But just know that the app store will come back to you and say they don't want you to require people to have um, an account. They want you to be well, able to see what it is before. And what I, I like what you did where you're like, what's your email? And then, hey, what do I, what should I call you? You know what I mean? Like back to that earlier point, like this seems daunting to me. Like I have to do so much work. But if you just ask me for the critical things like Steve, okay, email, cool. Desire your name, just put my email for crying out loud for now and then move on one at a time. Okay, let me go into this. Oh my God. Here we go again. Mm -mm -mm. There is the craziest snowstorm here. <laughs> I'm just filling air for you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I have to verify my email. I, uh oh. Okay. He's sweating. Make it easier. Make it easier. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out, Willie. So like, again, like, look at your numbers. This is just my opinion. I always want you to know. So like, take it with a grain of salt, but I'm out already because I don't, this is just too much work for something that I don't even know if you're bringing me value. Again, look, I know the counterintuitive things where people buy before using your app, all that jazz. But I think it's just we do have stats that say, if you show me your paywall before you make me create an account, you will increase your conversions. So that's why I'm pulling from this data where it's like people are more willing to pay you versus give you an email, in my opinion, in my opinion right now. So until I have stats to prove that, I'm just going to say it's my opinion that you should try to, whatever your monetization is going to be, try to get them to see the paywall. The number one metric is install the paywall view that should be as close to 100% as you can possibly get it. So do that first and foremost, and then, you know, do all this stuff. Let me see if I have the email from you. I think I you have a great episode on the paywall as well, Steve, that's worth yeah. referring back to. Yeah, that it's, I mean, it's talking about Jake. I think you're talking about the one with Jake with from Superwall. Really great episode. I got a lot of good feedback from that one. Okay. Yeah, I don't even see the email on my Yahoo, and I barely use my Yahoo. I don't see anything from you, Willie. 
Again, so this becomes a barrier. Like, I don't see anything here for me to click on or tap. Nothing on this Yahoo. Maybe I'm missing something. Anywho, so Spam. that's why I'm saying, yeah, I, I can't even get into your app now and give you feedback. Okay, well, to lighten the mood up, Mila, let's go to round three. Huh? Oh, uh, this is the tiebreaker. All right, everybody get their fingers ready. And let me find one. Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? You can go first this time. Okay. All right. Tesla founder Elon Musk is originally from South Africa, which is strange. You think he'd be from Madagascar. <laughs> Very nice, Steve. Very nice. Thank you for selling my joke. <laughs> I, I, I have a, I have another play on words joke. Yeah. So two parrots sitting on a perch. First one says to the other, do you smell fish? <laughs> it's a perch. <laughs> You're too smart for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a short word. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. Love the it. Fish, okay. The fish perch. The perch fish. Perch fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm totally losing, aren't I? <laughs> I got it. Okay, here, I had to Google it. Birch. Birch. Yeah, that's birch. <laughs> All right, put M if you thought Mila. This is very important, okay? If you do nothing else, you're going to make my weekend. Put S if you thought my joke was better. Put M if you thought Mila's <laughs> joke was better. Mila, anything we miss that you want to make sure we cover? Hmm. Any iterate, iterate, funny? iterate. Just keep it. getting better. Don't Don't feel like, oh, no, it's the end of the world. I made a mistake. Just keep going. I love it. I love it. I love all the advice you gave. My key learnings, just to summarize a little bit, she strategically set herself company up to where the talent's going to be. TikTok, look, keep posting. The biggest mistake she made was when she stopped posting, she's able to use TikTok and bring in a million downloads for essentially free, essentially just creating the content, right? That's pretty much it. And then eventually, don't become reliant on it. Like, you know, expand out and make sure you're not just reliant on that one platform. If you guys want to check out the app, like I will be on the app, you know, go to Pronti AI or search for Pronti in your app stores or just go to pronti.com. And if you want to connect with Mila, her LinkedIn profile is in the YouTube description as well. Mila, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else? Um, they, they're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I would highly recommend that you don't just click the connect button that you mentioned, Steve, because I get a lot of LinkedIn requests. And if I don't yeah. know where you know me from, um, I, I often just leave it sitting there until I figure it out. So, uh, yeah. do, do tell me, do tell me that you know me from, uh, this, uh, live stream and I will happily connect with you. Awesome. All right. Mila, looks like you're going to be wearing the outfit. We did just get three votes, but I hope that's enough. <laughs> I'm going to look so good in that hat and, out and hoodie. Yeah. I'll send you the hat. I'll send you the <laughs> I'll send you the, the Bronte. I'm going to put more outfits in here, by the way, so that you can have a little bit more. And then you'll have to post something, right? Yeah. I'll share that with us. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, next week, we're going to talk all about paywalls once again from Jeff from Purchasely. I like talking to people from all over the world, different companies that potentially do the same thing so that we can really digest that information and figure out what really works. And if they have differing opinions, I love that too. So tune in every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Mila, thank you so much for coming on and doing this and congrats thank on all the success. And yeah. thanks to the audience. Great questions. Lots of like feedback, even though I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. You're really a winner, okay? You're going to have you're going to look really good in a sweatshirt, black sweatshirt, black pants. Sure, maybe I did it on purpose. <laughs> All right, everyone. Join us every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific and I promise I have I won't miss any. But do we have a few spots available for our London workshop. We're going to do one in San Francisco as well. So stay tuned for all that stuff. I want to bring this sort of atmosphere live in person and make it more interactive and fun in person as well. We're having fun online, but we're going to have fun in person. All right. Till next time, see you on the next video. Have a great weekend. Bye.